Welcome to the Explore Composites Materials Library. This is Laminate Sample 36. It's a video about doing vacuum infusion with not enough vacuum. The laminate itself is pretty basic e-glass and epoxy, balance somewhat symmetrical. The real story here is trying to do something that's really not a great idea to show what happens to figure out how the process works a little better. And this panel is very simple vacuum infusion with the e-glass, the pro set. The difference is it's only done at 10 inches of mercury, which is about a third of full vacuum and 80 degrees Fahrenheit on the table. So looking at this infusion schematic, why lower vacuum and what will it tell us? This comes down to Darcy's law, which is sort of the concept underlying vacuum infusion. It relates the flow rate with permeability, resin viscosity, and a pressure differential. The pressure differential is the amount of difference between the vacuum and the atmospheric pressure. And that impacts how hard the laminate is pressed down on. And that compaction, as the vacuum increases, the laminate gets squished harder. And as it gets squished harder, it gets more compact and it's harder for the resin to work its way through. So I wanted to see if you press down less, and the laminate were less compact, but you also had less pressure differential, could you still do a decent vacuum infusion with way less than the normal amount of vacuum? So starting off here, I put down the sealant tape first, which is a nice way to do it with infusion, because one of the problems that's very common is getting a piece of glass fiber underneath the sealant tape. So it's all stacked up there. It is somewhat symmetrical, uh, because the biaxial and triaxial material is stitched and so each ply has an orientation. It can't be symmetrical in its own right. We've got some nylon coated peel ply and green flow mesh. The flow mesh is oriented the long way which is the faster flowing direction. Here's the inlet side manifold. It's just a piece of spiral wrap with a T-fitting. And I'm doing the pleats a little different in this one than I have done in several other videos because I put down the sealant tape first. I'm going to go ahead and form the pleats in place on the sealant tape rather than doing them after the bag has been placed. This will be a little quicker here on something like this. This is probably a good idea either on really simple things where you have very few pleats or really complicated things where handling the bag is a real liability. And making sure to keep the pleats symmetrical always and got to cover up that inlet spiral wrap with a little bit of peel ply just to make the bag less likely to pop through and so that'll feed from the side closest to where I'm standing and I'm going to put the vacuum manifold this little tube with spiral wrap on the far end so we're feeding away from the front of the table and there is a modest sized vacuum brake back there. So I'm matching my pleats across the bag. It'll be a couple inches between the end of the flow mesh. It's kind of hard to see with the green peel ply and the green flow mesh. But that will uh, allow the vacuum front to equalize because I'm going to try and shoot this quite slow. You might think that inlet hose is a little big. It is. All of that is meant to provide enough resin given that the pressure differential pushing the resin into the bag is lower than would be typical. And so it has less ability to kind of push it through a skinny hose at the required flow rate. So I'll pull the bag down here, making sure the pleats are very even. And it's not going down anywhere near as much as would be typical. This is more vacuum pressure you might use for fit bedding core or doing a bag wet layup that didn't need to be that well compacted. It's really not that much vacuum and it's kind of strange to, to, to feel how the bag looks and feels in terms of tightness at what's really only about a third of full vacuum. Is it 10, 10 inches of mercury or uh, about 700 millibar? And clamped off the hose, got the thing ready to go. I let it set for about half an hour under the bag. 
check it with a gauge, about 10 inches of mercury. So I'll mix up the resin. The resin is a ProSet INF114 with a fast hardener table surface. It's pretty warm, not super warm. Here it is. Resin's been sitting for a little while to try and get some of the bubbles out of it. I didn't degas it. And now I've got the clock set up and we're feeding. I definitely throttled it a lot to make sure that I wasn't overfeeding it. My main concern here is there's still a lot of air in the bag. If you only remove a third of the the, the air, the vacuum, there's still a ton of air molecules in there and it's all in the fiber and has to be moved out the vacuum side. And it's very easy because of the turbulence and the all of the stuff that goes into making vacuum infusions complicated. Um, it's easy to overrun that air and one of the things you can do when in doubt is slow down the infusion and this is short enough and warm enough that it'll fill very easily within the open window of the resin but as you can see I, as it hits the vacuum brake there the sides fill nicely and before it hits the vacuum outlet hose that resin brake absorbs all the time lets the resin catch up resin brakes are really important came back when it was cured and demolded it popped beautifully off this aluminum plate this is uh, Zyvex water shield release on the aluminum plate and cut all of that off you can see this is a released nylon peel ply and on this side it looks okay but not great the uh, surface plate is Blanchard ground and I didn't ferret beautifully and here I'm going to separate out the flow media and the peel ply we'll look at that in a little bit you can see the the plate marks in the back of that part now speaking of that flow mesh it's nice to be able to predict how much resin your flow features tube all are going to take up and so I weighed one square foot of used and unused and it came out to 750 grams or about 22 ounces of resin uptake and the weight of the panel 14.25 ounces or 405 grams for this square foot now having a look at it you can see the plus or minus 45 there there's definitely prominent white lines and I've labeled the feed in the vacuum side if you look closely at the back you can see it's quite voidy in the woven surface ply and I'm not exactly sure why this happened but I think it is that air uh, got trapped stuck to the surface and it was just either overrun or not enough time for it to get out either there was still a ton of air inside there that had to be physically displaced by the resin and those prominent plus and minus 45 lines there something weird going on with this fabric definitely white um, sort of white ghosty lines that's some of the heavier uh, yarns there in that biax that were the intermediate plies so I'm not sure what's going on so coming back to Darcy's law the flow factors the differential was quite low and I think the lessons I learned were that there's still too much air at a third of a vacuum to really make this work I'm not gonna turn this into my go-to method it's a great thing to look at but probably will leave it at um, educational value and try and use a lot more vacuum in the future for vacuum infusions thanks for checking it out